What would you think if I told you that what you are seeing before you is essentially a lichen with animal-like traits? I have always been fascinated by lichens. You see, lichens are these amazing creatures where fungi are seamlessly blended with the lives of photosynthetic organisms, algae or cyanobacteria. They are so seamlessly blended, so symbiotic, that not only do they mutually survive together, but they even reproduce as one. And here, in the micro story, we not only discover that lichens share such a deep symbiosis, but there are unicellular organisms that have much more in common with animals that also share a lichen-like lifestyle. And perhaps, of those various organisms, the best example is the Paramecium bursaria. Paramecium bursaria is a fairly large ciliate. Here's one at the corner of a slide and coverlet, and it's just barely below visible to the naked eye. A paramecium is motile. It can move around freely and by choice, just like microscopic animals. And yet, as you can see in the video here, its body is green. Well, in truth, its cellular body is nearly transparent, almost crystal clear, but it is filled with green algae. These algae are called zooclorella, and they virtually fill up the paramecium's body, leaving just enough room for organelles. The zooclorella mostly occupy the outer regions of the paramecium in order to capture light and conduct photosynthesis. Beneath it, the paramecium's organelles carry on life processes and its thriving cytoplasm moves nutrients. But, perhaps nowhere more evident than in this relatively still image of a paramecium, and believe me, this image was hard to get, these are very active unicellular organisms. When we look past the hair-like cilia that entirely cover the outside of this organism, almost like a fur, and perhaps switch to false color as here, we can see very evidently glowing in the false polarization, the zooclorella algae. And just like with a lichen whose body is comprised of fungus, these algae are the energy sources of the Paramecium bursaria. The Paramecium and its zooclorella partners are each capable of surviving without the other. But studies have shown that the Paramecium grows faster with its algal partners and the algae are much more susceptible to viruses without the Paramecia. Paramecia bursaria are not hard to find in nature, though they are one of very few Paramecia that maintains an endosymbiotic relationship with algae, but they are successful organisms and are ubiquitous throughout the natural world. Here, I've found one in a sample I've taken of river algae. You can see it lower central right. The organism upper middle left is a rotifer, but they have no interest in one another. The paramecium does not consume rotifers, and while I'm sure the rotifer would be happy to eat the paramecium, it is just too large. And right near that individual paramecium, I have found two more, trapping these strands of algae under the coverlets on the slide. The green of these organisms is absolutely astounding. They are even greener than the algae that surrounds them, by far. As you can see, these are very active organisms. They are perpetually moving about, looking for that right balance of oxygen and exposure to sunlight, along with a sufficient density of nutrients in the water, which the zooclorella can manufacture into food to share with their paramecium hosts. I think it is very appropriate to compare lichens to paramecium bursaria. The fungal part of lichens protects shelters and provides immunity to their symbiotic algae, and the protist part of Paramecium bursaria does the same, but one of the key ways by which species are distinguished and clarified is how they reproduce. And here, I have had the good fortune to catch a Paramecium bursaria in the act of cellular division. It looks to be about halfway complete. Now lichens create spore-like structures in which the fungi are transported with their symbiotic algae and bacteria, and P. bursaria also divides with its algae. As the organism goes about cellular division, it creates copies of internal structures such as its organelles. But, as is evident in this false color transformation, its endosymbiotic algae have also divided, and they are concentrating to either side of the dividing cell. You can see the thickening concentrations above and below center. And in this way, when the Paramecium bursaria completes cellular division, 
Each new paramecium cell will be able to take its symbiotes with it. We'll take a closer look and you can see the points of division, right here. Observe the wavy line just above the red marker. That is where the cell is in the process of dividing into two new cellular bodies. And the majority of the algae are clustered above and below in each new cell. You can see here that there is a very active metabolism going on within the body of Paramecium brassaria. Lower center, you can see cytoplasmic streaming, and center left and center right, contractile vacuoles open and close rhythmically, releasing surpluses of water. There have even been studies showing that this organism, really a collection of organisms, has some ability to learn. Could it be that this small, single-celled organism Lacking a nervous system even has some ability to feel emotions? While filming this Paramecium bursaria, I observed that it seemed to be fascinated with this algal spore. It kept rubbing up against it. I did not realize at the time that the water beneath the coverlet around it was drying up. The algal spore itself may have held a concentration of water, and the Paramecium kept trying to push itself beneath that algal spore. It was only just here when the last of the water around that algal spore was drying away and the paramecium became still that I realized what was going on and in retrospect that it had been frantic in its attempts to get at the water within or beneath that algal spore but it wasn't enough and the water dried away and the paramecium instantly died as it did so even its algae losing their color ultimately the Paramecium bursaria is in the kingdom Protista, meaning it is technically not an animal, but there is a wide genetic variation within the kingdom Protista, and some are more related to fungi, some to multicellular plants, and some are related to multicellular animals. In the microscopic world, we tend to draw what we believe are fairly distinct divisions between plants, fungi, and animals, but in the microscopic world, these distinctions can be blurry and many organisms share traits of any or all of the above. But given the Paramecium brassarius motility, that is to say its ability to move around at will, and given that studies have indicated that the Paramecium has some ability to learn, and possibly, as we just saw with the drying Paramecium's frantic behavior, even perhaps experience an emotion like fear, I think it is fair to say that the Paramecium has more in common with animals than anything else. And that's why I say that the Paramecium bursaria is like a lichen, except its algae are symbiotic with an organism like an animal, rather than organisms like fungi. Thank you for coming along on this voyage of discovery into the MicroStory. The MicroStory program is part of the Understory Network, a series of programs promoting education on the science of the natural world. Under our MicroStory playlist, you can find all the programs related to all things microscopic. In the Understory playlist, we study animals, plants, and fungi, and issues of conservation. And in the SkyStory playlist, we explore astronomy and the world of astrophotography. Our programs are made possible by our many viewers, patrons, and students. And we owe all of you a profound thanks. And if you like what you see here, please take a moment to like and subscribe.